Who is the most hated man on the internet? There are currently 1.1 billion websites on the internet. Some of these sites have content dealing with the worst individuals humanity has to offer. Dictators, genocidal maniacs, serial killers, mass murderers, and many more are splashed out over millions of pages on the internet. There's some pretty stiff competition out there when it comes to evil on the internet. So how do you become the most hated man on the internet? Welcome to Bad Things. In this video, we look at the most hated man on the internet, Hunter Moore. Imagine being entirely nude in your most vulnerable state. You take private photographs of yourself with no intention of sharing them until you feel comfortable doing so. They are saved on your computer. Only you have access to them until an outsider breaches your computer's security. Your private photographs are posted on social media for strangers to examine and harshly critique. Or consider exchanging images with a trustworthy partner, never expecting he or she would share them with the world. Now anyone with an internet connection can view your most personal moments. This crime is known as revenge porn. Lawmakers have defined revenge porn as the posting of private sexual images or films of another individual without their knowledge and with the intent of causing them humiliation or grief. Frequently, extra personal information is added with published photographs or videos. This combination might make a person feel insecure and may put them in danger. At the very least, it causes psychological harm to the victim. Hunter Moore is known as one of the pioneers of this seedy part of the internet. Moore's renowned website, titled Is Anyone Up?, which he launched in 2012, established a new, lower threshold for this crime. Moore participated in the practice of revenge porn, often known as active solicitation of compromising images from spurned partners, over a period of 16 months. Not only did he expose humiliating images, but he also dealt a second devastating blow when he connected the subjects' names, addresses, places of work, and social media profiles to the photos. It was performed with such ruthless precision that the aim of inflicting the victim's considerable distress was achieved. Moore said that the concept for the website originated from a woman whom he had repeatedly requested to send him provocative images. After that, he set up a site on which anybody could post naked images. This blog would later become known as IsAnyoneUp.com. Moore made money off of the website by linking pornographic advertisements and selling merchandise. For November 2011, the website generated $13,000 in income at server costs of $8,000, and more than 30 million people viewed the website's pages. Moore said that he managed the website for 19 hours a day, five days a week, and that he had a staff of six people working for him, including two experts in age verification, in order to verify that everyone shown was at least 18 years old. Sam Boyd, another partner, was also responsible for screening and filtering inquiries during this period. During the website's 16-month existence, some of the victims included an American Idol finalist, the daughter of a major GOP donor, the co-founder of Dreamwater, the bassist for Passion Pit, Cray Sean, one real housewife, various real housewives, mothers, school teachers, midgets, and a woman in a wheelchair, among many others, at the rate of 15 to 30 posts per day. The BBC took notice and dubbed Moore the net's most hated man. Facebook permanently banned him. PayPal banned him. Anonymous attempted to hack his computer. A woman stabbed Moore in the shoulder with a ballpoint pen when her nudes were posted on the website, and her father failed to be sufficiently intimidating when they visited him at his home. Death threats were made against him. He developed a monthly pattern of changing his phone number. Fearing he might be killed in his sleep, he temporarily moved in with his grandmother. Moore's website went from supplying titillating information to functioning as a full-fledged campaign to destroy people's lives very rapidly. Moore hid behind Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act of 1996 when he was questioned about the legality of his site. 
This provision provides legal protection to service providers and users of interactive computer services that publish information provided by third parties. To put it another way, Moore said that he was innocent since the information that he published was not created by him but rather by a revengeful user. When he engaged hackers to secretly acquire images, as he did in the instance of Kayla Laws, he crossed the line that separated him from being on sound legal footing. Charlotte Laws, the mother of Kayla, a courageous woman with a PhD in social ethics, two master's degrees and two bachelor's degrees, and has written several books and articles, had more in her crosshairs. Witnessing her daughter being shunned by colleagues and management at her restaurant job because of the topless photo displayed on Is Anyone Up?, she decided to take on more. Laws was angered by the opposition she experienced while trying to get her daughter's photos off the site. She called Moore and asked that he remove the image of her daughter from his website. Moore obstinately refused. Multiple attorneys were engaged by Laws to no avail. She undertook a two-year investigation in which she gathered evidence from over 40 victims of the site and sent it to the FBI. The police and FBI seemed to consider her daughter somewhat responsible for having the photographs taken in the first place. When Jeffrey Lyon, the president of Black Lotus Communications, the internet security business that managed Moore's website, got involved, Law's fight finally gained momentum. He was extremely receptive to helping, Laws said. He was able to block the page that had Kayla's nude picture, but Hunter went around Jeffrey's efforts and created a new page for Kayla, Laws said. Indignation and perseverance spurred Laws on, and she eventually succeeded. In 2012, she provided the FBI with a dossier containing information on the other women victims with whom she had communicated, and they searched Moore's parents' house in Sacramento, California. Is Anyone Awake was shut down and sold to an anti-bullying organization in April 2012. James McGibney, a former Marine, persuaded Moore to sell him the site. McGibney later redirected isanyoneup.com to bullyville.com, his anti-bullying website. McGibney sent this message to Moore. Sometimes you need to be a bully to beat a bully, and I'm the first to admit that I intellectually bullied the ever-loving S.T. out of you. Your main stated goal was to ruin young girls' lives, even after they indicated that they were going to commit suicide if their unauthorized naked images weren't removed from your website. You laughed in their faces. Are you still laughing now? You tried to destroy their lives, but instead I intellectually destroyed yours. You received a masterclass in the fine art of social engineering. Moore and Charles Evans, who went by the alias Gary Jones, who was recruited by Moore to hack into Kayla Moore's phone, were indicted in a federal court in Los Angeles, California on January 23, 2014, following their arrest by the FBI on charges of conspiracy, unauthorized access to a protected computer, and aggravated identity theft. Moore entered a guilty plea to the felony charge of aggravated identity theft and to the misdemeanor charge of aiding and abetting in the unauthorized use of a computer as part of a plea deal in February of 2015. In December of 2015, he was found guilty and sentenced to two years and six months in federal prison and a fine of $2,000 and restitution for $145.70. This punishment seems like a slap on the wrist when one considers the destruction he caused. Moore was reportedly released from prison on September 22, 2017, as shown by the inmate locator maintained by the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Hunter Moore was named the most hated man on the internet. He often made AIDS-related jokes on Twitter, produced educational movies on YouTube, such as How to Have Sex with a Cripple, and proudly boasts to have been stabbed in the shoulder by one of his revenge porn victims. In a weird turn of events, Moore was also one of the internet's most adored characters. His popularity was so widespread that his more than 8,000 followers have began using the hashtag, hashtag the family to remain in touch with him. The patrilineage is evident in hashtag the family. Moore's followers are his children, 
and more, the partially employed 27-year-old DJ is hashtag the father. The notoriety of Hunter Moore is about to be blown up again in the form of a Netflix documentary. Thankfully, the documentary focuses on the victims of his site and not on him. Thank you for watching Bad Things. Hit the subscribe button, like button and notification bell and share our channel for our up-and-coming true crime videos.